and welcome to Anu's classroom. We are continuing on the playlist on information system for managers. That is the course that we are in right now and in this video we will be talking about computer softwares. By the end of this video I hope that you will be able to understand and tell about what a computer software is, what are the various types of computer softwares, system software, application software, open source and proprietary software as well as a little knowledge about acquiring softwares for business. So let's get started. So what exactly is a computer software? Software is a word which we refer, used to refer a set of instructions, data or programs that are used to operate computers and execute specific tasks. It is the opposite of hardware which describes the physical aspects of a computer like the mouse, the keyboard, the printer, the monitor, all those things are hardwares. Software is a generic term which can be used to refer applications, scripts and programs which run on a device, a computer device. A computer program is a sequence or a set of instructions in a programming language for a computer to execute. Computer programs are one component of software which also includes documentation and other intangible components. A computer program in its human readable form is called as the source code. The two main categories of software which we can find around us are application softwares and system softwares. An application software that fulfills a specific need or perform tasks. And system softwares are designed to run on computers hardware and provide a platform for applications to run on top of it. There are other types of softwares including programming softwares which provide programming tools for software developers. There is middleware which sits between the system software and your application software. We have driver softwares which operate computer devices and peripherals and much much more. So let us dig deep into what exactly an application software is. The most common type of software is the application software and it is used to perform a specific function for a user or in some cases even for another application. The application can either be self-contained or it can be a group of programs which run the application for the user. For example, the Microsoft Office Suite in which includes the Word, PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft Access and a lot many other programs. Graphics softwares, databases and database management programs, web browsers like Chrome or Internet Explorer, Edge, Mozilla, Firefox, word processors, software development tools, image editors, communication platforms, Skype, um, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, all these things are examples of application softwares. Your VLC media player, all these things are examples. What about system softwares? These softwares are programs designed to run on a computer's application programs and hardware. System software coordinates the activities and functions of the hardware as well as software. And in addition to it, it controls the operations of the computer hardware and provides an environment or platform for all the other types of softwares to work in. Users do not interact directly with the system software because it runs in the background and handles the basic functions of a computer like the Windows operating system that is there in your computer or maybe you might be using Linux or Unix or Mac OS. All those things are examples of system softwares. It manages all the other computer programs, firmwares, computer language translations, translators, system utilities and all are yet another examples of system softwares. What about driver softwares? Driver softwares are also known as device drivers and this software is often considered as a type of system software. Device drivers control the devices and peripherals that are connected to a computer, enabling them to perform their specific tasks. Every device that is connected to a computer will need at least one device driver to function. For example, even if, if uh, you buy a new mouse okay, and try to connect it to your laptop, the moment you connect it to the laptop, at the very first instance, you will see a message. If you're using Windows, uh, it will be there down in the notification icon where it shows installing driver for a new mouse detected. Right, so that is a driver software. So examples of this driver software uh, could be special game controllers, softwares which enable standard hardware such as USB storage devices or keyboards, headphones and printers and all to interact with the computer. So in case you have not subscribed, a friendly reminder, please subscribe. It will help me a lot in reaching a lot more people just like you. 
What about middleware? The term middleware actually describes software which mediates between the application software and the system software. Or it could either be uh, something which lies in between two kinds of application software as well. For example, uh, the middle, uh, it is a middleware which enables Microsoft Windows to talk to Excel and Word. It is also used to send a remote work request from an application in a computer which has one kind of OS to an application in a computer with a different kind of operating system. It also enables newer applications to work with older legacy ones. What about programming software then? Computer programmers use programming softwares to write code. And this programming software and programming tools are what enables developers to develop, write, test and debug other software programs. Um, examples of such programming softwares could be assemblers, compilers, debuggers, interpreters. If you have uh, done uh, any kind of computer related course, then you definitely might have come across few of these programming softwares like Eclipse, PyCharm and things like that. These are called integrated development environments and these are all programming softwares which helps us to write code, debug, even visualize or preview outputs and things like that. So how does the software work exactly? All softwares provide the directions and data that computers need to work as well as meet users needs. However, the two different types that is application software and system software actually works in a distinctly different manner. So how is it different then? The most significant difference between a system software and an application software is that a system software operates on the machine side and it is essential for operating the computer hardware while an application software operates on the user side and performs a specific task as per the user's instruction. So another important concept which we have to learn while we are talking about computer softwares is the software development lifecycle or the SDLC. So how it actually works is that initially at whenever a programmer or somebody who is involved in information system, uh, what you can say creation or uh, things like that, they first have to plan what they actually need. Once the planning is done, they have to analyze what all things has to be there. Then they do a design, they create a prototype and then they implement it. And then we have to test and integrate because implementation and design and implementation will happen in phases. So at, after each uh, phase is implemented, we have to test it. And when a new phase gets implemented, we have to test the new phase as well as integrate the phase two with the phase one and test it again. So that is testing and integration. And similarly, if there is any issues or any upgradation required, we have to maintain our implemented softwares. So if there is any upgradation required, then again, we'll have to go back and plan our upgradations. So that is the software development life cycle. What is an open soft source software? Open source software is code that is designed to be publicly accessible. That is anyone can see, modify and distribute the code as they see fit. Open soft source softwares are developed in a decentralized and collaborative way and it relies on peer review and community production. The most famous examples of open source software are um, Linux, Unix, Red Hat and things like that. Proprietary softwares are opposite to open source softwares and these are closed source softwares that is proprietary. And those such softwares, their authors will own all the rights to use, modify and copy these softwares. Software products that do not meet the requirements for open source softwares are generally categorized as closed source softwares. Like for uh, example, Microsoft Word or Adobe, a PDF Reader, things like that. They are all closed source softwares. So how exactly as business managers, it is well and fine that we know what an operating system is or what a language translator is or utility programs are, are and all. But most important is as managers, we need to know how we can acquire a software for our business or what are the things that go into that. So whenever we find that we need a particular software for a business, for our business, which we are in charge of managing, we can go for two paths. We can choose either to build that software according to our demands or we can buy that. So building happens in-house, whereas buying happens from outside source. So if I choose to build, then should I build it in-house using people in uh, from my organization? So in that case, if there are not enough competent people, I might have to hire. Or 
should I instead of hiring on my payroll should I give it as a contract like uh, I'll create a subcontract and I'll get contract staff from other contracting agencies and once the work is done uh, we can simply easily end the contract easy for the company right so should I do that or if I have chosen to buy should I buy the standard version which is there or should I ask the selling company who owns the source code of that particular software to customize it for me and give so a lot of factors so this is a broad structure of how businesses are acquiring software uh, to choose one among these options is um, much more complicated and a lot more things go into it like our budgets the time constraints legalities the you know um, what you can say this resource uh, availability and things like that a lot 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 factors go into it but these are the general paths that usually we take while businesses need to acquire a software so if you have made it this far thank you very much for sticking through and i hope to see you in the next video where we'll be discussing more about information systems for managers thank you